Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. Today we're gonna to be talking about this, which is my personal survival kit. So when I'm out for a day hike, backpacking, some sort of wilderness adventure, this is the kit that goes with me. What we're gonna do in this video is talk through the gear in this kit, and then in the very near future, I'm actually gonna take the items from this kit and just that, and head out into the woods and do a survival scenario to actually test out the gear, see how it works for me, and then share that with you guys as well. So we'll talk through everything in here in just a minute, but let me add a couple more notes first. All right, so what I do is I keep this, which is a Wazoo survival bracelet, and I basically have it just clipped onto the grab handle. And so when I'm headed out for a day hike, I'll just take this off, I'll put this on my wrist, and now I've got my kit, yes, but I've got this on my wrist if for some reason I get separated from the kit. So this has a compass, it's got a fire steel, it's got tubing, obviously paracord, um, a whistle, this, uh, they don't actually make this model anymore from Wazoo. They have a new and different version of kind of their survival bracelet and they've got a ton of gear over there. So check them out. Wazoo survival gear makes great stuff. So yes, I have this as well. I'm not going to count this in the weight of the kit because it comes off immediately and it's on my wrist. Now, in addition to this, I've also got this SOL blanket. Now this one is uh, going to be a little bit more expensive than something like this, which is just your basic tarp. This basic tarp, um, it ran 329 when I picked it up at Harbor Freight. This one ran closer to 20 bucks. Uh, I like this one because it's a little bit lighter and also because it's got that reflective, you can see that silver, it's got that reflective lining. So if you set it up as a tarp shelter, it's gonna reflect heat back to you. It's obviously more compact as well. So this comes in at 11.5 ounces. The tarp comes in at 14.2 ounces. So just wanna let you know there's a couple options you can go with. I've chosen to go with this. So my preferred location for this within like a backpack is actually down the hydration bladder sleeve because I don't use a hi uh, hydration bladder that often. And that's, you know, it just rests down there. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So we have this and this. And then I also have a, a knife that I always wanna bring with me connected to this survival kit. Right, the first knife option that's been a favorite of mine is the SE Azula. So this comes in at 4.96 ounces. You can see it's got that forest green uh, color and then obviously your blaze orange handle. It's got a very durable plastic sheath with a clip on the back there as well. This one actually fits inside the VanQuest organizer, so it makes it a little bit more slick. Um, great knife. I've been actually using that, but now I'm shifting over to this because I just got this one. This is the Companion Spark from Mora. So it's a companion and it has the fire steel built in to the base of it there. So, um, you know, if you know more, they make a great knife. So I've got this, locks in like that, the high, um, just very durable plastic sheath. And basically what it does is it slides down the side and it's got that little, you can see right there, that little lip um, with uh, like inside the uh, clip. And so when that gets onto the side of the pouch here, it locks in, it takes a lot of effort to kind of pull it and finagle it around the, uh, around the straps there. So I'm going with the uh, Companion Spark. We'll give it a shot for this video that's upcoming and we'll see how it works. Um, I've used other similar knives to this in the past and like them, so that's why I decided to go with this one. So the weight for the Mora is 4.4 ounces. The weight for the kit is just a tiny bit over 36 ounces. And so, you know, this will be here. And then, like I said before, this will go into the backpack as well. So these three items are my survival kit for when I'm out adventuring in the wilderness. Let's start off and talk about the organizer. This is from VanQuest. Uh, this I got a long time ago. They've got updated versions of this. This is a, uh, an older version of their FTIM organizer. Um, zips go all the way up the side and around and all the way down to the bottom. Obviously we have molly webbing on the sides and on the back as well. You can, like I said, I'm gonna have the Mora on one side and then you can see I've got a tourniquet here. Uh, I also have a piece of 3M reflective tape right here and that's going to, uh, you know, if I put this down at night and I have a flashlight or a headlamp, it'll give me a little bit of a chance to find it if I, you know, misplace it, let's say, in the dark. So that's what this looks like. There is a Velcro loop here or a pouch on the, um, on the front. So open this up and a couple things. I've got a large orange bandana. This is 21 by 21, good for signaling. A lot of different uses, obviously. You could you know, filter some water with it as far as like a pre-filter. I often use a Shimog scarf when I'm out hiking just for warmth, warmth, so that would give me an additional option. But there's one item. Another item is this, it's a bunch of tin foil. And this is about two feet by three feet of tin foil. And then I have a Fresnel lens. 
and obviously that's going to be a fire starting option. Now this is one of many fire starting options you're going to see in this kit. The one last thing you'll see in this kit here on the outside are a couple of safety pins and I use these a lot if I need to get um, like a splinter that's really deep I can dig into my skin and get it out and then obviously if you need to make a sling or repair gear these are a couple you know extra extra items lightweight that you can use. All right let's open up the kit here. So as you can see with this section opens up like this and then we have more gear up here so I'm gonna work from the bottom up. First thing is my fishing kit. In here I've got hooks, I've got weights, I've got a couple lures, I've got fishing line. I decided to keep it in this little container because uh, first of all it keeps the fishing line organized, it's not getting caught up in anything else. Secondly, um, I want to let you know that I have uh, committed fishing hooks You know that you'd buy at like a fishing store, even, even Walmart or sporting goods store or whatever. Um, I have those as my primary uh, option for hooks. I do have a couple of those survival cards up in here um, that you snap the um, you know you snap the hooks out of. But I just feel like a dedicated uh, hook that's made for fishing. It's just beefier. I wanted to go with that. So food is not my primary focus. But now I've got a very small lightweight kit. If there is water around that's got fish, at least I can have the opportunity to get a little uh, little sustenance. Got a tiny pair of tweezers here. Obviously you can use that for a variety of things. I'm thinking about you know removing um, foreign objects, any part of my skin, my eyes, whatever it might be. We've got the Slim Rescue Howler. This is from uh, actually a medical kit originally. Very good whistle. So I've got that if I want a signal. I've got a couple forms of cordage here. I've got about 50 feet of Kevlar cordage, I've got about 30 feet of wire, and then I've got about 30 feet or 35 feet of um, paracord here, obviously bright orange. Lots of different uses for that. I'm not thinking snares so much with the, uh, with the wire, though you could use it for that, but more so repair, and you know there's other ways to use wire. Uh, again, food important, but not a top, top priority uh, in a shorter survival scenario. You can see here I've got a very small solar charger, solar panel with a micro USB. This is going to plug into the headlamp up here. Um, it's obviously a very small panel, so it's going to take a while to charge. But if the battery in this headlamp totally dies, at least I have some way to charge it up. So I'll talk about the headlamp a little bit more. And you know, I'm, there's, I'm kind of debating some of the gear in here, what I might want to swap out in the future. But that's why I have that there. I do have um, Repel here. This is obviously uh, bug spray. 40% DEET, uh, it's, you know, if I get bit by all kinds of bugs over 48 hours, not a huge deal, but this can make my life less miserable if I've got a way to keep the bugs away. So that's why I put that in there. You can see I've got some duct tape. This is about 20 feet of duct tape. I have a single AAA battery that's gonna connect to this flashlight up here. I also underneath here have, I have, uh, I think there's nine uh, stormproof matches. I've got three different strikers and then I have two quick tinder tabs or tinder quick I always forget exactly how the what the name is but um, these are great but you know if you if you destroy one of your strikers then it's kind of gonna be a problem it's hard to light it so that's why I put a bunch of those in again you'll see I have a variety of ways of starting fire especially in New Hampshire in the cold weather I'm definitely gonna want a fire Right here, I've got some, um, it's just basically a soft material. It looks almost like tape, but this is what you use to, um, you know, hang when you're hang on to like a tree when you're marking your, your trail out to your deer stand or something like that. Again, if I'm trying to get people to notice me, I've got that bright orange bandana. I've got this. If I travel somewhere, maybe I could leave these as identification of where I'm traveling through the woods. So that's why I brought this. Again, the idea is not reestablishing civilization out in the woods. It's getting out alive, letting people know you're there, helping people to find you when they come to look for you. Last thing you'll see in this section here is I've got some money. And I just think to myself, you know, money is a great tool to have. So let's say I got lost and eventually I found a road and I hiked out. I can like say, hey dude, I'll pay you 20 bucks or 15 bucks if you'll give me a ride. Maybe I get to a town and I don't know a whole lot of things, you know, know a lot about the town, but there's a, a store there. So while I call and someone's coming to help, uh, you know, come pick me up, I can buy some food. There's a million different ways you could use money, but now I have some in this, uh, in this kit. So that's the lower section here. Let's talk about what's up top. So I do have this headlamp from Nightcore. This is a very, very lightweight, small headlamp. 
Um, you do have to charge it up. It doesn't take a battery. It's got an internal battery. Like I said, I do have that very small solar panel so I could charge it up. Um, this thing is very compact and lightweight. That's why I chose this one. However, I may swap it out and go to something like a Princeton Tech that takes a couple AAA or two AAA batteries and bring some extra AAA batteries. But we'll see uh, when I test this one out, you know, how it works for me. But I've used this one on and off for a while and it's worked well. So that's why I, I chose to use that one. Uh, working from this side over here, I got one of these, um, the Whirl Packs, and this is gonna be a way to carry water. Um, I do have another way to drink water with a, with a filter, but if I wanna carry it and transport it in addition to other things, this is great. I don't have a, a container like you know a Nalgene or a metal bottle obviously in here, but this allows me to transport some water if I have to leave a water source and go somewhere else. Now speaking of that, right next to it, this is probably like one of the most important items in any survival kit in my my opinion is the uh, Sawyer mini water filter or something like this, a life straw. But this gives me the option to, to drink water right from a source without having to worry about boiling it and stuff. I did a survival scenario a couple years ago and I had to boil my water, let it cool and drink it or drink it warm. And on a hot day when it's you know just 90 degrees out, it's not very refreshing to drink water that's been boiled and it takes a while to let it cool down. So that's why I'm taking this great item. Sawyer makes a great product. So that's going to be in my, uh, in my kit. I mentioned a bunch of different fire options. This is one of them. Here's a uh, Bic lighter with the Exotac um, sleeve around it. This glows in the dark. I put some zip ties on it to make sure that this top doesn't fall off. If I have to get to it, I have my knife. I can, uh, I can break that off. But again, I've got um, I've already showed you the Fresnel lens. I've got this. I've got matches already. You can see a bunch of different ways to start fire. Water and fire, huge deals. I've got my, my covering as far as my, um, my tarp I showed you before. So I've got some of the basics really nailed down. I have an additional light. This is the i3e EOS from Olight. This takes one AAA battery, which you saw down here. Um, if that headlamp goes out, I want another way to, to walk or do things around camp at night. A lot of people think, well, I'll just use the light of the fire, but I'm telling you, you know, once you get 20 feet away from camp, it's often very hard to see. And so I, this is why I brought this additional light. I've also got a Sharpie here. So um, if you want, if you see a plane passing over the set, you know, every hour there's a plane passing over, you can write a note on your hand, write a note on your arm, just to remind yourself of something. If you're gonna travel somewhere, you can find a nice flat rock that's kind of worn, maybe it's very gray, you can write a note. This is my name, Tim. I'm traveling in this direction. Call out for me. Um, this is my injury. This is what happened, how I got lost, whatever it is. It's a way to communicate. So that's why I brought that. Here you can see I've got a Metrix um, protein bar. Um, if you're in the woods, yes, you can fish. Yes, there's other way to get food, but this is an easy way to get some calories into you. Um, people often say, you know, well, you can go a long time without food. You can, that's definitely true, but you'll start to feel the effects sooner than you think. Um, from personal experience, I can tell you that doing survival scenarios and just in life in general, you know, if you're going 18 hours without food, you start to feel that. So that's why I've included this as well. It's not gonna sustain me for forever, but it's at least, you know, something to eat. Down here on the bottom, I've got a uh, Leatherman Squirt PS4. As far as compact Leathermans, I think this is the best one. This has a blade on it, has a file on it. It's got a tiny set of pliers as well. As far as um, small Leathermans that you could put in like an Altoids tin or something like that, I think this is the best option that's out there. Up here is this card uh, from Tops. It's got a, um, a safety pin that's keeping attached it attached to the kit here. On the back is all my personal information, uh, my wife's name, phone number, medical information, all that type of stuff. So that's, you know, if say I got injured and then they finally found me and I was unconscious, now at least they know what medications I'm on, things like that. Uh, I also have on this little lanyard system a fire steel. This is a um, a light my fire fire steel, I believe it is. Yep. And then this uh, the scraper has a whistle as well, so another way to signal. And then I've got a compass, and then this is one of those squeeze lights which can actually lock on. Let's see if I can get it to actually lock in. There we go. And so if I put this push this back so you can see it. there it is now it's locked in if I put this on a piece of paracord I can swing that around to uh, to definitely get somebody's attention not the best compass out there but a good compass um, and uh, 
you know, if I have a map or if I need to do some orienteering, at least I have something to give me a general direction. So that's why I have those items. Now back behind here, I've got uh, Mini Inferno. This is a fire starter. So it looks like a tiny little kind of wafer and it's just impregnated with all kinds of flammable uh, material. So that'll help start a fire. Again, fire, big deal for me. That's why you can see this is being repeated again and again. For emotional, spiritual encouragement, I got a picture of my family, my wife and my kids, and on the back I've got a bunch of scriptures there. So I've got uh, Psalm 34, 4, Psalm 27, 1, and Romans 8, 38, and 39. And so this is, you know, when you're in a real survival scenario, keeping your head in the game, remembering that you got people who love you, those are important things. The psychology can't be overstated. So that's why I have this in my kit as well. I mentioned I had a couple of the survival cards. These are both from Grim Workshop. I really like Grimm's stuff. So these are a bunch of fish hooks. And then we've got some fish hooks. We've got a scraper. We've got something you can make into kind of a spear. So very lightweight, very small. And these are, you know, the hooks are secondary to the hooks I actually have in my fishing kit. I already showed you. Signal mirror. This one's from Essie. It's actually got some instructions on the back as well. This is one of the ones with the holes in the middle, which are the best kind. SD makes a great product. I do have these little energy strips. Um, it's kind of like a tiny little shot of Red Bull. Um, so if I had to, you know, push through and really hike hard or, you know, just it's something to give me a little bit of extra energy. It's called Elite Ops Energy Strips. So there's that. I do have, like I have my tarp, that's to keep the weather off me. And now I've got this, and this is an emergency blanket. I did a video on these a while ago. Um, I found the difference between the outside temperature and the temperature inside the blanket when it was wrapped around my body or inside you know, the area around my body when I had this wrapped around me. So I've got something to cover me and also something to cover me at night to, uh, to wrap up and stay warm. That's everything there. And then in this back section, I've got a couple things. In this bag, I've got some iodine tablets and some ibuprofen. If you get a terrible headache or you're in a lot of pain because you know you, you injured yourself, at least this can take the edge off a bit. And then the iodine tabs, I do have the Sawyer, but if I you know have iodine tabs, drop them into the, uh, the Whirl Pack, now I can treat water that way as well. I do have a couple Small things here, I've got the um, a write in the rain pad from Going Gear. Again, if I wanna jot down notes, maybe I wanna leave a note for somebody and tack it to a tree. Now I've got this, and then I have the tiny survival guide. This is a, uh, a tool from my friends David and Craig, and very inexpensive, very lightweight. Um, it does have a water resistant material that's actually on the, um, on the paper. And this can not only teach you some skills when maybe you're nervous and your brain's like not in a good place because you're freaking out because of being in a, a really scary situation, survival situation. Uh, but also it's something to distract you from the fact that maybe you're in a bad situation. So now I've got something to read. These are super cheap. Pick them up on Amazon. I'd get a couple, some for you, some to give away to people. Tiny, sur tiny, sur tiny survival guide. And then just a few more items here. This is the military speed hook. This is from my friends over at Go Prepared Survival. And this is a way to fish without being there. So it's got the bait included. It's a system that you can set up and you can split and then come back later and then hopefully you've got a fish. So that allows me to be fishing while I'm out doing something, building a shelter, collecting water, whatever the case may be, doing something else. So there you've seen my survival kit. Again, my personal survival kit connected to wilderness survival, not urban survival or everyday carry kit. Um, like I said, this is the kit. I'm gonna take it out into the woods. We're gonna do a survival scenario, see how it works, see what I like, see what maybe I'd swap out. I'm always trying to update and improve my kits. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, I'm, I put a annotation at the beginning, but just a reminder, a full list of the items in this kit are in the description section. So go ahead and click that show more tab if you wanna see a list of all the items that are here. So yeah, one of the best things about Everyday Tactical Vids for me is the community, the discussion, the feedback. So let's hear your thoughts on this kit. What would you change? What additions would you make? What things do you like? What things would you swap out? Let's get that conversation started and stay tuned because very soon you're gonna see the next video when I actually go out and test this thing out. All right, guys, thanks as always for checking out the videos. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.